Hallelujah. Were well, you touched by that testimony? And I like the song in the background too. Thank you for your special love for me. Amen. I feel so touched by that testimony. God bless you, my dear. And I know God has already spoken to so many of us. Um, it's Father's Day today. And now, let's be honest. How many of you, hey, serious. How many of you, oh, let's be serious. How many of you um, found out about Father's Day? Honest. How many of you found out last minute that uh, to, tomorrow is Father's Day or today is Father's Day? Yeah, because I think fathers are not really... Today somebody sent me a text that I, I couldn't believe. That fat, about the different things that fathers do. And at the end, it's still Mother's Day that we celebrate as if there are no fathers. Amen. But uh, how many of you have your lives and your relationship with your father has changed since you joined the church? How many of you want to no, genuinely lift your hand and wave at me? If you're you, fantastic. And I believe truly, the Bible says the spirit of Elijah will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. And so today is a special day at the First Love Church. So we want to celebrate all fathers here today. Find the nearest father. This morning, this morning I did, I did a naming ceremony for, uh, I did a naming ceremony for one of our pastors. And I look at him, he looks like a small boy, but he's also a father. So there may be a small boy next to you, but he's also a father. Happy Father's Day. Amen. Now, we also want to wish our father here at the First Love Church, our prophet, a happy Father's Day. Now, a father is a father in, in the classic dangerous sense. Our prophet explains a father or describes a father as one who causes you to be. Amen. And so we wouldn't exist for sure, I can tell you. I, I have never been to this area before, me person, which even means I don't like trouble. I think that's what it means. And prophet has brought us to a place with troubles. Amen. And I believe God has blessed us as a church. We've come from so far, all the way from Legon Hall Chapel, all the way to where we are today, that we are not feeling hot. Last week, I saw some people at the back doing this, and they were feeling cold. To be cold in a church, in this church, this church, this particular church, to feel cold here, is, is something. And um, another, another, um, truth about fathers is that without a father you wouldn't be there and so many of us wouldn't be saved I mean when I heard her testimony I was just thinking about the pastors who went to visit them somebody had to say this is a pastor which takes a lot of faith if you know those two pastors that we were talking about it takes a lot of faith and so the pastors the leaders the shepherds the placenta leaders the church members we want to say happy father's day to our prophet Thank you for appointing us, believing, consecrating us, choosing us. Thank you. Thank you for coming all the way to be our pastor and to be our friend. Amen. And then uh, we're ready for the word of God on Father's Day. Today, today one of our members told me her father is usually not around for Father's Day because her father lives abroad, but now he's here. So what will she do? And I said she should take him out for dinner. She said she doesn't have money, but anyway, she will take him out and then he will pay. Yes, so that's what we are going to do this afternoon. We are celebrating Father's Day, but he's still the one providing the meal for this afternoon service. Do you believe that nothing is impossible? Let's sing the Father's Day special, for nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Do you believe it? Come on, let's sing it.
is impossible. It's impossible when you're trusting in his work. Hearken to the voice of God to be. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in. Oh, I trust Jesus. And we are resting on his word. There's nothing impossible this afternoon. There's nothing God can't turn around. There's nothing he won't do. Everything is possible with God. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. And on this wonderful Father's Day, let's welcome to the stage my father, your father, Bishop Dag Heward Mills. Come on, give God praise. I can't hear you. Give God praise. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity we have in your presence. We are grateful and thankful for all that you do for us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now, today I want to share with you, I'm continuing on the series about entry points to the supernatural, but I want to, because today is Father's Day, I want to look at a few things that are related to fathers, amen. Now, um, an entry point to the supernatural is actually uh, obedience. One of them is obedience, obedience to God. So when you start obeying, your life becomes supernatural. But what I want to also say is that an entry point to the supernatural is when you start to have a good relationship with your father. Your life begins to become supernatural. Or there's some supernatural involvement in your life. Amen. Look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, 2, 3. All right? What does it say? It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Okay. Now, how many have ever wondered, what should I do? What's, what's the right thing to do? What is the next right thing to do for my life? Amen. What is the next correct thing to do for my life? Amen. And this scripture is beautiful. It says, children... Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Years ago, I didn't really see this verse as I did, but now I see it differently. All right? Joel on stage, please. Joel Saki on stage. So the Bible says, this is right. This is right. And I heard Rick Joyner saying, and prophetically he was saying that, you want to know what is right is what your your, your parents say, that's what's right. Some people come and ask me, so my father says I should do this, and my father said, I said, do what your father says you should do. That's the right thing. That's the right thing. There's nothing else. Just do it. If your father doesn't want you to marry somebody, don't marry the person. Excuse me. Amen. So what your parents tell you is what is right. Okay? That is the right thing. And that is what starts to bring supernatural involvement in your life. You, you, you struggle with your parents. You struggle with what they want. So a parent doesn't want you to marry this person. <laughs> Should you marry this one? Should you not marry? Your parent doesn't want that. 
that's what's right. Just obey them. Because I've never yet seen a parent who doesn't want something good for his child. So at least the motivation is there. Do you see? The motive is there. And if you are married in a home where the parents are divided, and it's a very common thing that mother and father are divided. If you are a child in a home where the parents are divided, it's common. If you are in a home where the parents are divided, you have to be careful lest it destroys you. Because you can easily have a skewed image of your father. Because you may be quickly connected to your mother. Because mothers are always looking after you. About what you are eating, drinking, not well, this, 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 this. So you always have more to do with them. So if you don't take care, you and your mother form a united party. You get it? And then you start to swallow the negativities of your mother. Because when people stay married for some time, they have sometimes negativities. And they dislike each other even. So you, or even if they are divorced and you, the one parent is here, one parent is there, you swallow and you take on the heads of, your, of one of the sides. You take on the pain of one side. You are not yet at that age. You are not yet to have such a problem. And at a young age, you, you take on a problem of grown-ups. Join yourself, amalgamate yourself to a problem and you merge as a party against a parent and you have not yet reached that stage of life. So you have to be careful. For those of you who are parents who are in different, they are, they are opposed to things. You must be very careful. You know? One brother said to me, you know, after years of being very close to his mother who was caring for him, when he grew up, he said, no. I see things differently now. So, very important that you be careful in your relationship with fathers. Since today is Father's Day, I am explaining to you this verse. I want you to know this verse. What is the right thing? Your, this is right. What they say is right. Look at it. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this, what is this? This, what they are saying, what they obey, obedience is, this is right. And if there's a challenge between what your father says and what your mother says, it's what your father says. Your father is the head of the house. Your father is the head. If there's a question as to who, father and mother are divided, your father is the head, not your mother. Yes. Then it goes on. It says, honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. What does that mean? There were other commandments. Can, can you bring the Ten Commandments? Can you find the Ten Commandments and project it on the screen for us? I think it's in Exodus 20. So, the, no, no, find the Ten Commandments. Commandment number one, two, three. There's a plea. You get the Ten Commandments listed beautifully. All right? Now, um, Honor your father and your mother. Respect them. Not deceive them. Anybody you deceive, you don't respect. You see the person as a fool. And children who grow up in good homes, when I say, not good home, but like a home where maybe the parents are sort of godly or maybe they go to church, that's what I mean. Those children, if you have a peaceful existence at home, it could be that you have a peaceful existence with your parents because you are deceiving them. So your parents can never imagine how you are. 
Because apart from doing every bad thing, you are also deceiving them. So anybody you, de- you, you deceive, you don't love the person and you don't honor the person. You don't respect the person. One time I went to the Swiss embassy and I saw a sign, Swiss embassy, where they don't, don't, they don't be, I mean, they are not believing in God or whatever. And they have written a sign there with a scripture about telling lies that liars will not prosper. I mean, for people who are applying for visa, they should, st- they put in the verse for them that liars will not prosper and so on. That is the verse that they've put at the Swiss embassy, I mean, some time ago, I don't know if it's still there. Because people will come and say, your name is Ajua. Meanwhile, you are a, a man and your name is Ekua or Ajua. And all kinds of things. Lies about this is my father, this is my mother, this is my relative, and all are lies. And you see, what we don't realize is that you want to deceive people is because you think you can fool them. And you think, but you see, what you should have rather is respect. These countries you are trying to get a visa to go to, they've taken people to the moon and brought them back safely before. And you want to go and tell them that your mother is this. You look even funny. They know our roads better than we know them. That Google Maps you are using, I tell you, they have charted every corner of Accra. They will even direct you through a fittest yard to a road at the back of the yard. You should be afraid of Google Maps. It's what it knows. <laughs> every corner is charted. Even in the furthest corner, you see that. that you can't easily deceive them. But you see, you have to rather elevate them in your mind. When you try to deceive somebody, it means the person is not so great in your mind. But when the person is very great in your mind, so when I say this, they will know. It's a place of birth. You've written Accra, but you were born in Bogatanga, but you've written that you were born in Accra. It's not true. You've changed your age. You've changed your age. You have a different age. And then when you get older, you get to retirement faster than you are supposed to. Then you see that you are saying that you are, you are 60. Meanwhile, you are 54. Now you say you are 60. Because you, so, and you, you retire, you have to leave the job. Then you want to change it again. All these forms of deception show that you don't realize how great the person you are trying to deceive is. And how much knowledge and information and how much it's not so easy to deceive this person and that in the end it will backfire. That's what I'm trying to explain to you that honoring your father and your mother includes not trying to deceive people. One young man was telling me, he said, look, I had four girlfriends at the same time. I said, who is your father? Is your father a pastor? My father is a pastor. So does your father say, no. He said, up to today, my father and mother, they cannot even imagine me. I'm having sex with my girlfriend with three other roommates. We are four in the room. Here am I with my girlfriend having sex and there's three other roommates. We are all together. This is my life. And I'm running four girlfriends at the same time. My mother thinks I'm an angel. And a virgin. Some of you look like angels and virginity angels. But nobody knows. Nobody can tell. <laughs> Listen, I'm, today I'm telling you, honor your father and your mother. Don't deceive them. Don't think you can fool them. You are not fooling anybody. You are harming yourself. Anybody that I have found deceiving me, that person withers before me. Because once you lie to me and I find that you are a deceiver and you are deceiving me, are trying to be fast and deceiving me, immediately your trust naturally flows out of me. Trust for you. And when you are not trusted, you have been demoted. You have been demoted. It's difficult to be trusted. It takes years to, for you to trust somebody. Years and years. Oh, yes. 
There are people I can give the key to my bedroom and tell them, go, to, and I'll show them, go to my room, here, 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 look, find this for me. But there are people I wouldn't even want to show them where my gate is to my house. I don't want them to know the area where I live. And there are others you can show them, enter my room, go to here and here and here and here, you find this and bring it to me. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. Trust makes a lot of difference. So honor your father and your mother and one of the ways to disrespect and dishonor somebody is to fool the person. And then that's where somebody said, they made a fool of me. They made a fool of me. That's, that is, that, you, have, you have embarrassed the person or fooled the person. You fooled him. You've made a fool of him. You can't make a fool of your father and expect to get away with it. Maybe it may look as though it's okay. But I'm showing you the Bible. Have you found the Ten Commandments? I need to see number one, two. Beautiful. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no strange gods before me. That's the first commandment. These are the ten commandments. It's found in Exodus. Number two. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. That means don't shout Jesus. Just. Oh, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. You know, in films where they say Jesus and Jesus Christ, they, they, they are taking the name of the Lord in vain. Okay? You don't say okay. I hope I've, I've come to the right church today. <laughs> the third commandment is what? Remember to keep, look. Can you find the Ten Commandments in a, in a language that we can understand? This one, if you don't understand, remember to keep the Lord's Day holy. Holy is the, the Lord's holy day. I don't know what, is it a Sabbath? Is that what it means, Sabbath? Aha. Uh-huh. This one is better. I am the Lord your God. You shall not have any strange gods before me. Good. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God ah, in vain. Number three, remember to keep holy the Lord's day. It's the same thing. Don't you have it in King James? King James words. And the fourth one is honor your father and your mother. But there is a promise attached. So I need to see the one with the promise. This is the commandment that has a promise. With it, all the commandments don't have a promise. But this one has a promise. And the promise about it is in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 3. Have you found it now? Okay, this one is better. Remember to keep the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. So, honor thy father and thy mother is the one with the promise. So, find the commandment which has the promise and put it on for us. Please, work hard, okay? We are all working. Nobody is free. Nobody is at ease. (laughs) Amen. This is the commandment of the Lord. And Ephesians 6 And verse 3 tells us clearly that it may be well with thee. This is the promise. And that thou mayest live long on the earth. Happy Father's Day. Beautiful. But remember that honoring your father and your mother grants you a particular blessing. What blessing? That it may be well with you. I mean, this blessing, that it may be well with you, it affects that it may be well with your finances. It may be well with your marriage. It may be well with your relationship. 
It may be well with your work. It may be work well with your ministry. It may be well with your job. It may be well with anything about you that it may be well with thee. That's what it means that it may be well with thee. So if you have a beast with your father, you get what I'm saying? And a problem with him, you cannot talk to him, you cannot relate with him, you are angry with him, you have formed a political party, you, your mother, and your, the rest of your siblings have formed one party oriented against and separated and oriented against your own father, I'm telling you that it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing because you are taking the heads of a mature relationship between a man and a woman which can get so sour and so bitter that when a man and a wife and a, one of the spouses are found murdered, the first accused is always the spouse. The one who claimed, who's claimed to be the, the most, the one who loves the person most. The first accused is always the spouse. How did the person die? Nah, maybe the husband killed or maybe the wife killed him. One brother, he woke up in the, night, in the night, he found a knife by his bed like this. Oh yes, he was afraid. Hey! And the knife had been put on the side of the bed. Paul, I was standing there like that. Do you think he will feel free to sleep again? Those of us online, I hope you are there. Ah. I hope you are listening because it applies to you. Oh, yes. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. I hope you are watching. Now, honor your father and your mother. This is the promise that it may be well with you. Many times it is not well with us. Things are not working. One relationship after another. So many boys. Oh, not even one wants to marry you. All of them want to sleep with you, but none wants to marry you. It is not well. Do you remember the story I told you of a prostitute who had a customer and the customer said, I want to marry you. Do you remember that story I told you? Yes. And he was in the queue. And he used to come back and every time he sits in the queue, I think everybody's allowed, I think, 15 minutes or 30 minutes for the, whatever. So he sits in the queue and waits. And when it is his turn, he, and he, pays, to, he pays to go in. But when he goes in, he, and she, she starts to try to have sex with him. He says, no, 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 I didn't come here. I want to marry you. Yeah. Now, you, you are not in any prostitute office. And he's not interested in marrying you. Huh? Does it occur to you? Oh God, will you not send somebody who is that type into my life? And my father-in-law said it. When he when he's a good person, he wants to marry him, marries you, wants to marry you now. That's what my father. I was afraid when I, when I was going to propose to my wife and I wanted to marry. I was afraid that he would be so against it. It was the opposite. He said, no, a good person will always want to marry you now. Yeah. You may think that he's full of lust or desire or whatever, but it's like he wants, to, he wants nothing bad to happen. Yes. Are you still here? Yes. I hope I'm not alone as I'm, I'm talking. Sometimes I feel alone. Today I, I was told that it's Father's Day. That's why I'm talking this way. I didn't know that it was Father's Day. Yes. God wants you to be blessed. And one of the ways you start ascending in your life is when you can correct your relationship with fathers. Fathers, spiritual fathers, ministry fathers, 
biological fathers, uncles who looked after you, grandparents who looked after you, anybody who is a father figure in your life. Oh yes. That's your duty. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 3. Beautiful. Now, I remember one day a brother said to me, my father is in prison. My father has been arrested. I mean, not as arrested, but he's in prison. So I said, what, what did he do? He said, oh, he's a thief. He steals. I said, wow. I said, go and visit him. Take everything that he needs to him in the prison. Visit him. Show him, everybody, this is my father. It's my, I love my father. He's my father. He's in prison. I don't know what he did. It's not my concern. Is it your concern to correct fathers and to teach them? Thou shalt teach thy father. Thou shalt correct thy father. Thou shalt uh, uh, train thy father. Thou shalt uh, make him into an honest man. It has nothing to do with you. Your, your job is honor thy father. Yes. And when you have a child, you also correct your child and train your child. If you want somebody to train, wait till you have a child. Then start your training anointing and be training. I said to him, go and visit him. Visit him. Honor is the only thing you need with your father. So today is Father's Day. I'm expecting all of you to send messages to your fathers, even if they've never heard of you and they will be surprised to hear from somebody like you. Because you've joined a party with your mother or with whoever it is against him. Correct that thing and make yourself a darling boy or a darling girl in your house, in your father's house. Malachi chapter 4, verse number 5. Malachi chapter 4 and verse number 5. Are you watching? I will send you Elijah, the prophet. Huh? A very serious high-ranking prophet. And what is this high-ranking prophet coming to do? He says, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And what is he going to do? He shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers. Lest or in case or so that I shouldn't come and smite the earth with a curse. In other words, I'm going to turn the father's heart so that he likes his children. And I'm going to turn their father's, the children's heart so that they like their fathers. That's all. I don't know who I'm talking to, but every one of us here has a father. Biological, spiritual, ministry father, different kinds of people that have been fathers to you. A father is very unique, different from a teacher. A teacher just teaches you, but a father causes you to exist. You would not have existed either in ministry or at home, or you would not exist in this world if it was not for your father. No matter how tall you are, you still have a father. Are you there? Yes. Over here, are you here? Yes. Oh, yes. So, rise up in the spirit realm, okay, and decide that I'm not going to be a problem child. And even if you've already been a problem, how many have already been a problem? No, I need to see the hands, I, I, otherwise I'm going, to, I'm going to close just now. Yeah. How many have been a problem at home before? Raise your hands. Yes. I, it looks like most of us, except the last corner, the, those at the end there, that those seem to be some angels have packed themselves over there. <laughs> Even if you've been a problem before, 
whether spiritually, physically, biologically, you must correct it. And I don't mean correct it and deceive. You see, that's the way we correct things. We just go underground and be, and, and be a deceiver. Yeah. Now it says, I will turn the heart of the father to the children. Because your father's heart can also go away from you. Yes. Your father can lose interest in you. Say, okay, it's over. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Do whatever you want to do. Feel free. A father can decide that. So, oh, okay. And there are many fathers who are hurt. Even pastors of churches. They are hurt by their churches. I remember one pastor, it was his birthday. They took an offering and they brought it to him. He sent it back to the church. He said, no, no, it's okay. He doesn't want anything from the church and whatever. People. God bless you. Thank you very much for everything. It's okay. Bye-bye. The heart of the father has gone away. He doesn't want anything to do with the church. Even though he's the same pastor of the church. And that's not a good thing. If you want supernatural blessings and supernatural things to start happening in your life, remember that you will not have the first and initial blessing that you need in this life if you have a struggle with your father. You know, one day I went to the golf course and there was a professional, you know, a professional golfer. He, he, he taught myself, not that he taught, but he played with myself and Bishop Saki and Bishop Eddie when we first started playing golf. So, you know, he was introducing himself to somebody and he said, oh, I gave them the initial swing. Wow. Yes, I gave them the initial swing. <laughs> oh, yes. I gave them the initial swing. That was his English. That's what he is. I gave them the initial swing. That means he taught us a bit at the beginning. That's what he was trying to say. So, when you miss out on your father's blessing, you miss out on the initial swing. Yes, the first blessing that you can have in this life is the initial swing to initiate your life. Yeah. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. Little girls and boys, don't do that to yourself. Yes. Now, one of the things that happens, you see, read, read the next verse. Verse 4. Ephesians 6 and then verse 4. Ephesians. Yes. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature and admonition of the Lord. Now, the Bible also says that fathers should not provoke so because of this scripture, when you are antagonistic to your father's instruction, are you with me? Your father or mother, but today is Father's Day, so let's uh, concentrate on the fathers. It's not anything about gender balance, it's about today is Father's Day, we've had Mother's Day. When you are antagonistic to your father, and your father's best. The Bible says, fathers, don't provoke your children. So your father's best bet is to keep quiet. And not to talk about what brings the provocation. So then you start to have what we call the silent phase of fatherhood. Where there's more silence than anything else. Because nobody wants to bring up the topic that is going to stir up hatred, anger, talking, bitterness, and everything else. And you have the silent face. Because the more you talk, the more the person wants to go away. You can ask Joshua. When he was uh, uh, in school and they were going to school and all that, at the point he was, he was way off. Off totally. Yes. <laughs> He was off completely. Doing all sorts of things. 
And I, the, the Bible says, fathers, don't provoke your children. So I never talk to him about the ministry. I always thank God for Pastor Clement and Sister Marie, that they were, they were that was his church in Nottingham. When he went one day, I called him. He, I said, what are they doing? He said, they were fasting for, is it 40 days? I said, my son is fasting for 40 days. I do not know what can make him fast for 40 days. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But me, the father, I've stopped talking. And I don't say anything. You should be a pastor. You should be in the ministry. You should be a Christian. No. No, because at a point, if you continue talking, it is going to cause provocation, anger. So you say, and then the response is the person has a chance to repent. And the person has a chance on his own to hear from God in any other way. But unfortunately, some people would even turn around and rather accuse you that you have rather abandoned them. Or that you don't like them. That is the usual. So if you talk, you'll be provoking. If you don't talk, you'll be accused of, I don't like this one or you like this one. How many have ever felt that your father doesn't like you? Uh, you are a lot. Oh. I don't know why most of you are raising your hands. You want to be truthful, isn't it? Yes. God wants the heart, not the actions. The heart of a child must be towards the father. Yes. Not just your actions, but your heart. You must see through and know that your father is your father. Like I said to my brother, even if your father is in prison, go there. Go there. As you see him as a bad person, and as you see him as a monster, it means your heart is completely twisted and Satan has twisted your heart because Satan wants to curse you. Satan wants to come and enforce curses. During the floor prayer meeting on Friday, we were praying against demons that are sent to enforce curses and implement curses. So what curse is going to come? What the scripture says in Malachi, it says he would turn the hearts to the children and the children's heart to their fathers so as to prevent a curse from coming somewhere. That is it. A great frustration. It's so sad to see places where there are no fathers. And fathers are this way. So you are not any father. You are just a brother. People have, 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 have not wanted me to honor Bishop Duncan Williams. Ask Bishop Duncan Williams. I put his statue in our museum over there. Because I said, why, why, what do you do? And you see, a pastor came out of the, he built the largest church in the world. When he came and he entered that museum and he saw Archbishop Duncan Williams' picture, he said that this is a very great thing. He said that Ghanaians don't honor fathers. That's what his, that was his comment. He said that I can see that, that this is a very good thing. That somebody who was there before all of us. Most of us attended his church at a point, or even if it was once or twice, he was there. So you can't grow up disregarding, ignoring, setting aside, disregarding, write that word down, disregarding, write another word down, ignoring, write, write that another, another word down, setting aside, setting aside, re- disregarding, setting aside, ignoring, separating yourself from fathers. Your, your life will not go well. Your life will not go well. Your life will not go well. Obey your father for this is right. I love that scripture. What's the right thing to do? Just do what he says. Listen, you can't be in this church and I will not point you back to your father. Not here. Not here. Once you are here, I will point you to your father. Even if your father is saying whatever against me, I'll point you to him. That's your father. Do what he says. That's the initial swing. That's the initial swing of life. It will give you the initial swing. (laughs) Are you excited about the initial swing? 
Oh, yes. Cat is come. I always need you all when I preach about this. Give him a microphone. Oh, yes. Come, come and stand by me. Now, you know, you know him, right? Okay. Now, you tell me. You see, because when we started the first love church, the first day, I think, was the first day, way there on the very first day we, we came. I mean, he was a little smaller than this. I think he's put on some weight since he married. Yes. Now, when we came, when I started to talk about all these things, you tell us your story, how it happened, your, you and your dad. Um, so when... You were growing up. Yeah, when I was growing up, basically... Mm-hmm. Um, my, my mom and my dad were married. They never divorced until he passed. But there was always friction for as long as I could remember. And, of course, because my, my dad was busier, my mom was at home. And so I naturally gravitated towards my mother. She used to give you food? Food, care for me. Like, my mom was my person, yeah. you know. So, like... She loved you? She loved me, yes. When you are not well? At, Everything. She, she, she was there for me. Mama. Yeah. Sweet mama. So there were, there were times that maybe they would have an argument or a fight, and then he would go. And then I would be left with her, and she'd be crying and stuff. So it, all of those... It broke your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it set my heart in a place. Your mother is crying. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> She's suffering. <laughs> Under the, the torture of your father, yeah. the torment. Yeah. So Ooh. it, I mean, for as long as I could remember, that was my disposition towards my father, that he was like this very hard man. Yeah, come this way. Screen, we are watching. Put us close up. Who is that? Yes, that he was this very hard yeah. man, a man who had. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in the picture. <laughs> But he was this very hard man, this man who caused my mom to cry, mm. you know, and that, that really made me not like him at all. So you didn't like him? No, no, not, not one bit. So basically... Focus on him now, focus on him now. <laughs> close up, close up, come on, be active in your mind, okay? Yes, thank you. So basically his role in my life was provider. The only times that I would come into contact with him, the only times I would call him, was if I needed something. So most of the time, especially when I go to uni, when I would call him, hello, dad, hi, okay, so what do you need? Was the next question that he would ask. Then I'll tell him, okay, I need this, 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 and this, this, okay, I'll send you. Things like what? The money. Or like maybe the next term is coming, I need to pay my fees, I need to pay my wholesale fees, I need to like change a phone, I need to buy a laptop, I need spending money, stuff like that. Then I would, I would just tell him, then he would say, okay, how much? Then that was basically the extent of our relationship. And then even when I was not in school and I was home, we, we lived in the same house, but we basically had no contact. Mm. Uh, how many live in the same house, but there's no contact? Most of the time. Okay. Yes. So um, when, like maybe he's, he's at work, when the, when the house, my mother, the children, maybe are watching a show on TV. Or watching or television. Yeah, and it's like the family gathering. Mm. And then we hear that, like, this is the horn. My yeah, father's, yeah. yeah, boom, at the gate. Boo, boo. Then what happens? And then someone, okay, I would say, <laughs> eh, bae. Eh, bae. What does that mean, A by A? It means he's coming. He's coming. His name has turned to he. A by A. A by A. A by A means A, A is he. It, it or he is coming. It is coming. Is it it is coming or he is coming? It's more of... It's it. It's, it's more of it. it. Yeah. A by A. The A kind of dehumanizes the person. Yes. So it's no longer he... It's more of an it. It is yeah. coming. The thing is coming. 
How many have said that in your house before? A by A. Raise your hand. I, I, look, if I feel lonely, I think I, I have to. Curtis, let's go to the backstage. I think you continue telling me the story in the room. Okay, continue. Yeah. So then everybody will go to their room. In, uh, my twin sister, Aquile. You all scatter. Yes, when you everybody. Get on. Yes, so everybody will go to their room. If it's something really interesting, we'll continue watching it in our rooms. But then, like the living room, there'll be nobody there. So there was this time that he came into the house. Everybody was in their room, but I opened the door of my room a little bit to see, and then I realized that when he entered the living room, the hall, he put his stuff down, and then he went to the TV, and then he did something interesting. He put his hand behind the TV and felt it and if you do that immediately you know that the TV is warm so you know that people were watching it prior to your arrival and then and when it, they heard you were coming that's when they left everybody scattered and how do you think he felt yes that's it. as he entered realized that everybody has dashed everybody is in the room as if they are sleeping oh yes Continue. So when you came to the First Love Church and you were speaking to us, it was something that I think it was either the first or second time you were speaking to us. One of the questions you asked is how many of you have a problem with your fathers? Or how many of you like your fathers? How many of you do not like your fathers? And of course, I said that I didn't. And I, I felt justified because I felt that I knew the reasons why I shouldn't like my father. Huh, he's somewhere, you see. <laughs> But you started to talk about it. You preached about it. You said, like your father. I think that's the main thing I remember. You said, like your father. I had a meeting with you. And you said, like your father. Curtis, like your father. So I said, I will try. And then I started, like, when he would come home, because he usually came home late, around 11, 12, I decided that I wouldn't retreat to my room any longer. I'd wait for him and sit there, talk with him. I started going to his room to try and have a conversation with him. I would call him without an agenda. I would call him without like something to buy or something that I needed from him. And in the beginning, it was a bit rough because I could feel that he was... Was he surprised? He was very surprised and I think suspicious of, of my motives. That why am I doing... Why, why will you not be suspicious? <laughs> when... Be Josh came and he was now like a Christian and he came around and he was, you know, trying to do things. My first reaction was I was suspicious. I said, this is not genuine. I don't know this way. He's trying to help. He's trying to do this. He's like, hmm, I've not seen this one before. <laughs> yes, you'll be suspicious. It's like, what is going on? Is there a plan? There's a new plan you don't know about. Yes, continue. Yes, so we had that period where I realized that, like, even though he, 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 he didn't warm up to my, to my advances, but then as time went on and he realized that I wasn't changing, I was here to stay, then it was like a switch. Everything changed. Then all of a sudden, I'll be there, my father will call me, and then he would say things, hello, my son. And it was something that I'd never heard before in my life. And then he would just call for us to chat. If he's doing a project, something, he would say, okay, I'm going here. I'm going to see this land. I'm building this. Come and sit in my car or come home from school. I want to go along with you. I remember there was one time I even messaged you that he, he was starting a business of some sort and he was registering the company. And then he called me to come. He said, I have some documents for you to sign. And then when I got home, he gave me the documents and told me to oh, sign here and be like my assistant for what I'm doing. And then I messaged you about that. I cannot believe the change. It was like night and day. All of a sudden, my father was like my friend. And then he started to give me things without me having to ask mm. for them. Where at first I would have to calculate and call and then say, oh, I need this, I need that. Now he starts to be like, okay, I saw this. Would you like it? I saw this phone. I saw this thing. I saw this, that. I remember when I was even in school, where at first I couldn't even broach the idea. 
he would come and say, okay, uh, you are in law school now. I think you need a car. So come home. Let's go and look at some cars. And then my dad bought me a car. And it, it didn't stop there. It, it, it changed my life totally. I became very comfortable. I became somebody who didn't have need for anything. But more than that, I became someone who knew that like my father liked me. And it, it, it was a really nice and strong relationship. I remember telling you when my dad passed that um, he had COVID and then he was struggling. And the last phone call I ever had with him, we, we talked, he told me a couple of things. Then he, at the end of the call, he said, I love you. And I, that was the one time, the, the first and the final thing I ever heard from him. Um, a couple of weeks later, he was gone. And I just looked back and realized that it was six, seven years of like a real relationship with my dad. And sometimes I think about it and I wonder if I hadn't moved when you said, like your father, that I would be living in regret because what I didn't know at that time when you were giving me that instruction was that I had seven years I had only seven years to have a relationship with my father. He was not going to be there when I got married. He was not going to be there when I had a son. I had a limited window for obedience, seven years. And so even though I regret that it took all that time, even though I regret that it took all that time for my relationship with him to change, I thank God for those last seven years. Wow. Wow. What a blessing. What a blessing. Put your hands together for this amazing testimony. Amen. His father's last words to him, that was the peak of the COVID. His father's last words to him was, I love you. Yes. And your father's last word to you could be no comment. For you, they have nothing to say. It's okay. Many blessings come to children who honor their father. Look at that. Let's look at the verse. Children, we are not in Sunday school, but we are still children. Look at it. Look at it. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And I remember when Curtis came, he said his father told him to do a particular course in England. And that was it. And I said, just do what he says. And he did it. Beautiful. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Okay? Then honor your father and your mother. I think the reason why God gives a special promise to this is because if you don't honor a person you can see, you will not honor the one you can't see. If you don't love the man you can see, you can't love God whom you can't see. If you don't honor who you can't see, whom you can see, standing right there, you can't honor him, but you, are on, you, you say you honor God. It's not true. If you don't obey somebody that is sitting right in front of you and saying this and that, you don't obey and you are not going to obey God whom you can't see, who is so vague and you can't see where exactly he is. There's no way it's going to be that way. I want to, I want to really talk to all of us who have developed the art of deception and deceptive living in relation to our families and our fathers and our Christian homes. Fathers are very, very powerful. They are dangerous people, especially in relation to somebody who is a child. Both biological, spiritual, ministry, the person is due, due, through, to, through that person that you exist. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 15. What does it say? Though 
Though you have 10,000 instructors, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you have not many fathers. This was Paul, Paul writing to the church. He says, for in Christ I have begotten you. I am a father to all these churches in the UD. In Christ I've begotten them. Through whatever method it is, they have come to exist. So if you are in the church or related to the church or connected, I am a father. And the Bible says that though there are 10,000 instructors and people, who has caused you to exist? Who made you a pastor? Who made you a bishop? Who, who, who made you what you are? Who built a church for you? Who caused you to be whatever you are, wherever you are? You see Madam X giving the announcement on the stage. Who gave her the name Madam X? Who introduced her to speak? At Carnival, not now. You see, this testimony is not today's testimony. So we are talking about years ago. This church, we've been around at least 10 years. Who's the, what, from the beginning. I'm talking about from the beginning. Many things you are, if you think deeply, you realize that you would not even be there if it wasn't for somebody even introducing you or saying something. Some people would even be married. You came to find your husband or your wife in the church. So this is a warning. And Paul was saying, though you have 10,000 teachers, they talk, 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 talk. Because people go to school and they like, they, my teacher said, my teacher said, more than my father said. Have you not heard it from the child before? My teacher said, teacher said, my teacher, Mr. So-and-so said, Mr. So-and-so. I said, Mr. So-and-so is now the greatest wisest person. Ah, you've been looking at your Sunday school teacher and become, I mean, your, your, your uh, nursery teacher, kindergarten teacher. Auntie what? Auntie Rose. <laughs> and who? Pastor Charles. Auntie Vicky. Auntie Vicky said, now it's the main person. How can that be? <laughs> teacher Berima. <laughs> Everybody, I am trying to paint a picture in your heart. Huh? Thank God for all the different people who are nice in your life and who are important. Your father and the fathers. Anybody who is a father or father-like. Because some people are not really your father, but they are father-like. Father figures. Fathers of something that you are part of. Remember. Hands off and care. And try to have something, even if you can't have such a wonderful relationship. I know a sister was just telling me, I sent text to my father and he, I can see that he's double tick. I can see his blue tick. I can see, but he, he doesn't reply. I said, because he's wary of you. I asked her, you and your mother, are you not form a, a team? He said, yes, we are. But I said, he, he, he doesn't know who he's responding to. Maybe it's a message passing through you for something. But as you keep on, you will break the ice and you will realize that you are genuine. It's nothing unusual. Oh yes. Make sure you make yourself a darling son, darling boy, or a darling girl. No matter who you are. Oh yes. Oh yes. When I look at fathers, you see that they only have something good in store, but not knowing that it is a spiritual thing. Don't make a mistake. You can come from the same womb. Don't follow the bad children in your family. You may come from the same womb. You'll be shocked that everybody looks different. How many have seen that sometimes you look at your brother and say, but you are different. 
Some are tall, some are short. Different types of children from the same womb. Same father and mother. I want to show you a family that had a serious issue. And all the children behaved differently. And it brought different things. Look at it. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 20. Look at it. Genesis chapter 9. Look at this family. Noah began to be a husband man. That's a farmer. And he planted a vineyard. His work was with the vines. When you go to Switzerland, you see the vineyards planted all over the hills. He'll be there soon. Very soon. And he drank of the wine. He was tasting. And he overtasted. Listen. In the line of duty. Whatever. Don't worry. And he was drunken. And he was uncovered within his tent. Change the version on this, this verse. Let's see what it says. He was uncovered. And he uncovered himself. NIV maybe. He drank and he lay uncovered inside his tent. Change it to the message of the living Bible. What does it say? And he lay, yes. And he passed out. He got drunk and passed out. Naked in his tent. I mean simple and short. He drank and he passed out. He was found unconscious and naked. How many have passed out before and uh, you've done it before? Somebody's raising their hand over there. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Carry on. Let's go. Let's watch this family. Now, Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father. He, I think he passed by the tent and he saw that his father was naked in the tent. And he told his other two brethren who were outside, change the version on this one too. Change it to, yeah. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw that his father was naked and told his two brothers who were outside the tent. So a, a person who goes around spreading bad news or bad stories of his father, his father's nakedness. Do you see? Now, if his father hadn't built the ark, if Noah hadn't built the ark and put this boy in, Ham, he would have drowned in the water a long time ago. He would not have been able to see his nakedness and be talking about him. Let's go on. Now, Shem and Japheth, they were not interested in looking. Look at what they did. Are you watching? This is a family of a man with his three children. Same womb, children behaving differently. You will join the good group of children. Shem and Japheth, who are the other two children, took a garment and laid it upon their shoulders and went backwards. This is an interesting thing. They walked backwards. They didn't even walk into the tent to go and cover their father like a nurse. They didn't want to see, so they walked backward like this. Come, my man, come and walk with me backward like this. So you are holding one side. Hold it like this. Hold it. You see? You see, we are, we are holding back. We don't want to see. So they walk backwards. Backwards. Come so the camera can see her this way. Eh, be active in your mind. Eh? <laughs> be active in your mind. Yeah. Backwards, 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 backwards. Are you holding a black one? You look like you are pointing to the sky. <laughs> Go and sit down. <laughs> And then look at what they did. And they covered the nakedness of their fathers. And their faces were backward. And they saw not their father's nakedness. They didn't even see it. Those of you who want to see your father's nakedness. You want to hear a story. You want to find out. I hear this. I hear this. You want to find out more. You are asking questions. Catherine Kuman says she found out with experience that people who are inquisitive and want to know things often have an evil motive. I read it in Catherine Kuman's book. Want to know this, want to know this, want to know this. Why do you want to know? Why are you not relaxed not to know? Just flow along. Change the version. Change the version of that, that verse. Uh-huh. Shem and Japheth took a cloak, held it between them from their shoulders, walked backwards, and covered their father's nakedness, keeping their faces turned away so they did not see their father's exposed body. Next verse. 
and Noah awoke. Noah got up. Noah was sleeping. Ah. 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 What's this blanket? Whose blanket is this? And he got up. Ah. Ah. Security. Security. Two security men come. You, no, no, you are, you were helping me. And the other one come. Ah, what, what, what happened? Did you see anybody? What has happened? I don't know where this blanket from. You saw who? We saw uh, Japhet and uh, Ham, Ham. Who did you see? Ham came in first. Huh? Ham came in first. And Ham? Yes. yes. Bring me a microphone. These people are giving me the detailed information of what happened. I don't know how I came to this place like this. Who came? I want to know who exactly came here. I'm not trying to report anybody. Okay, no problem. I yes, don't... please. But when you were asleep, Ham came in first. Ham came first. Ham. And when he came out, he was laughing. He was laughing. He was laughing all over the place. My goodness. Yes. And he had his phone with him. He had his phone. He had his phone with him. Means he took pictures. I, I, I cannot confirm. I was not there, so I cannot confirm. But he had his phone with him. And then you said what? And then what happened? So, so Ham, Ham left. Yes. But he came to tell us yes. that he had seen something. Yes. No, you are security men. Yes. <laughs> yes. You came yes. to tell. He didn't come to tell us. You don't know that you are security men. You were on guard outside the tent, and he came to talk to you. Oh, no, he came to tell us something. But we didn't know what it was. So he was talking to us that, oh, he's coming it, from that room. And boss, it's the language it. barrier. It's the language barrier. <laughs> you know, language. Language yeah. barrier. Okay, tell yes, me what. I think so, he's, that, so he's not educated. After, after Ham left. After Ham left. Yeah, he went to tell the two, the two brothers that they mm. should also come and see. Whatever the, was there to see, I don't know. Ah. Then Shem and Japheth came. But they took Shem and Japheth came. Yes, but they did. To this room, when no, I was sleeping. But they went backwards. We saw them ourselves. They went backwards this you way. Saw, did you see my son? Yes, yes. you saw Shem. Shem you and saw Japheth. Shem. Yes, you saw and Japheth. Shem. I said, did you see my son? You said you saw Shem. Uh, How Shem. many sons did you see? No, it's no, a two. language barrier. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is crazy. <laughs> this, How many of my children? I want to know how many of my children That's came here Shem today. Shem and Japheth. You saw two. Two. Yes, two. they came backwards. But I have three children. Ham came first. Ham came first. When he came out, he was laughing. And he, he was had his laughing phone and with he had him. his phone. He had his phone, his phone with him. Okay. Yes. That was Ham. That was Ham. Then after he left, he went to tell Shem and Japheth. How do you know he went to... Yeah, because Shem. they also came. But how do you know that maybe they were led by the spirit to come uh, at that time? Uh, you can't confirm. You can't confirm. They, they can't confirm. Okay. Yeah, they, but they came backwards. They came with a blanket. Yeah, they just went this way and they How entered big your was room. The was it this one? This yes, 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 this one. This, this very one. blanket. Yes, this one. They brought it. They brought yes. this blanket. They brought this They blanket. brought this one. We don't know. We, we don't saw know them what? at the door. Yes. We saw them at the door. And yes. they were holding it like this. Like this. Like this. They went and like then this. they entered like and this. that was it. Like this. And then they came out. And then and they, they came out. But they were not laughing. And when they came out, they were not holding it. They the were blanket. not laughing. And they were not laughing. And they were not laughing. They were not laughing at all. Are you sure? We are yes. very sure. Your jobs are on the line. Yes, please. Yes, please. Are you telling the truth? You're telling the truth. Cross your hand and shame the devil. Do you cross your hand and shame the devil? Okay. All right. Thank you. No further questions. No further questions. No further questions. Wow. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Now what's going to happen? Look at it. And he said, curse. Immediately curses are flowing. Yes. He knew what his younger son had done. And the first word is a curse. Yes. He cursed the son of this man. Yeah. So cursed became a, a servant of servants shall he be. Now there are only three people in the world. Though. These three boys are going to give birth to the whole world. Ham was cursed. Then what happened to Shem and Japheth? Blessed be the God of Shem. Canaan shall be his servant. The next one. And God shall enlarge Japheth. And he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. And Canaan shall be his servant. Now, what does this mean? 
And verse, the next verse. Yeah, and Noah lived after the flood 350 years. So Noah sp- spoke a curse. Now, the descendants, if you have a Dick's Bible, you can look at the descendants of Ham, descendants of J- Shem, and descendants of Japheth. But just as a very quick summary, the descendants of Shem are those from the Middle East, the Canaan Middle East type of people. Descendants of Japheth are Asia and Europe, European nations. And descendants of Ham, in, in, no, I, I, please, it's not, I, I, I don't, 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 I don't want to, you see, you, you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going home. <laughs> Okay, the descendants of Ham, all right, are where the nations Egypt, Sudan, Libya, and so on. Go and read your uh, Bible, Ethiopia, and so on. It's all there. If you have a Dick's Bible, read it. Kush. Now, it's not been easy for us. Servants of servants, as if you think deeply about what it means. Like there are servants. So it means you'll be low. Then the servant will have a servant. Now, have you noticed, most, it's not easy for a servant to build a house. How much more the servant's house help? Not easy. So how many want a blessing from your father to give you an initial boost in life? An initial swing. How many want to hear the sound of curses? It shall not be heard in your life. So, happy Father's Day. But I want to tell you, how many want to know the master key of relating with your father? Very well. How many want to know the master key? Shall I give you the master key? I don't think you people want to. I'll I'll tell another another group. I'll tell another group. Are you sure you really want to know? I think I shouldn't tell you too many secrets. Do you want to know the master key? Yeah. Ask your neighbor, what do you think the master key is? The, 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 what do you think the master key is? When you think about it, what do you think it could be? Huh? You like to know? Yeah. The master key for relating with your father. Okay, do you think there's a different key for when things are working well and when things are not working well? Maybe there are different keys. Like if things are not working well, there's a key. And if things are working well, there's another key. Or when you are a small, small, small child. And when you are a bigger child. And when you are a grown up child. It's all one key. It's the key of humility. Yes. Humility. Let me, let me tell you when you are proud. When you can correct your father, you, have, you, you become proud. Who corrects who? Who corrects who? When I correct you, you correct me. When I say, you say. When I say, you say. When I say, you say. Then you are proud. When you correct your father in your head, you are also proud, but it's hidden, it's submerged. It's covert pride. Yes. When things are going well, you need humility. Because even when things are going well, you may even think to yourself, things are going well because... I'm also a grown-up now, and I also know what I'm doing. When things are not going well, like the prodigal son, all you need is humility. Humility, humility. The prodigal son said, you know what? I'm going back to my father's house. I don't care what anybody says. But some people don't want to admit that they were wrong. Even God changes his mind. How can you have a mind which never changes? Even God changes his mind. Changing your mind and saying sorry is one of the important things to do well as a child. Many never say sorry. You know, I've been wrong. I was wrong. I'm sorry. That's the end. This weekend, I had a dinner in my house with some pastors. And some of the pastors were pastors 
who once used to be with us and have left. And they've come to say sorry for all the different things that went wrong and all that. They've been, they've been related for years. I decided, oh, let me have a, a, a time with them. All that you needed is sorry. I'm wrong. That's all. Learn to say sorry at work, in your marriage. How many marriages are so beastly because sorry is never said. And when it is said, it is just said as a mean I can't care. What did they say I should say? Say sorry. So, uh, yesterday, sorry for what happened yesterday. That's all. Sorry will change everything. Humility. As if I've texted him, he hasn't answered. He, I mean, oh, who are you that he should answer? Just keep sending the text. Keep sending the text. One day I saw somebody who has sent me text. I checked how many texts the person has sent me and I've never replied. And I was so touched and I replied. And then I got to know the person's name and I saved the person's name. Because sometimes I can have 700 texts on my phone. I, I can't know how to answer them. Plenty. So many people have said, man, Kenya, I went and prayed for Kenya. Hey, the Kenyan that sent me messages, eh? Plus two, five, four, plus two, five, four, plus plenty. I, I started to reply, so I, I realized that, look, if you don't take care, you'll be dizzy. Yes. So now they're going to want to pray for a country. I have to take my time before I pray for that country. <laughs> Learn to be humble. Oh, yes. Some people want, you want to come and see me. So I have no time. What times I have no time to, whatever. I mean, I can't, I can't just be hanging around. Sorry. 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 Where did you develop all these attitudes and bigness? Where, where is it from? Hmm? In medicine, we would have called it idiopathic pride. Pride without a cause. We don't know, we, we, we can't know the reason why what do you have? Who are you? God is teaching you today. Humility is the master key for relating with fathers. When you are humble, you will learn. You will flow. By all means, I must know something you don't know. And there's something you can get from me. Yes, there's something you can get from me. by just flow in a certain way. Yeah. If I'm a father in this church, you will not be all sitting here. You will not be. You were not here when we came and found this land. You were not here when we decided to do all these things we are doing here. Where would you have been? Tell the truth. It wouldn't be important. It wouldn't have do, do anything. Thank God for grace. Be humble. Be humble towards your pastors. They are also like fathers to you. They are delegated fathers. And God will bless you. Your whole life will change. Oh, how difficult it is for a proud child. A child who cannot say sorry. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm practicing something. Sorry, I'm sorry for anything I've done sitting by you. Yes, I'm just practicing saying sorry. Stand to your feet. Amen. Lift your hands. I want to be more like you, Jesus. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be a vessel you work through.
chapter 10 and verse 30. against each other. We are one. I don't have a different mind from my father. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. I and my father, there's no problem. Look at what Jesus is saying. I and my father, there's no problem at all. We are one. I and my father, there's a flow. There's a flow. I and my father have the same mind. There's no difficult, there's no struggle. This is, this is what it means to be like Jesus. As we sing this song, I and my father are one. Let's pray that we will be like Jesus in relation to his father. He said, my father has not left me because I always do the things that please him. Wanna be more like Come on, every hand lifted up. I wanna be more like Jesus. John 8, 29, he that sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone. You are going to need your father's involvement in your life till you are 70 years old. You may not know. You may not know. You know, my mother, even up till today, in her state, sometimes I'm just waiting for her to say something to me. When my mother points to me and says, all the best, I feel so happy. Sometimes she look at me. She doesn't have many words that she can speak now. And she say, you are good. That's all. She can't talk, but she can say a few things. It touches my heart. Lift your hand. Look at what he said. I and my, uh, my, he that sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone. Why? Because I always do the things that please him. Lift your hands. Father, thank you. Thank you. We, we are committing ourselves to be good children, to enjoy supernatural entry points and blessings as we serve you, as we honor you, and as we follow you. Let us have the blessings of good children on our lives, all the days of our lives. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Sing it for the last time. I want to be like Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. today. Lift your hands up wherever you are. I want to give my life to God. I want Jesus to save me and I want to become a son and a daughter of the Lord. Maybe you are invited but you are not born again. Today I want to give you a chance to be saved. If you are here like that, wherever you are, lift your hand right now. God bless you. God bless you. I see all your hands. If you've lifted your hand, I'm giving you a few seconds to come to me in the front here if you lifted your hand just walk to the front and give your life to Jesus Christ today God bless you come come from wherever you are I'm going to pray with you in one minute I want to be more like Jesus
Lift up your hands. Father, we love you. We thank you for all these wonderful souls who have come to you today. All of you in front here, say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I give my heart to you. Wash away my sins. Make me a new person. Through the blood of Jesus, wash away my sins. Cleanse me. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my life today. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I want you to go with our pastor, Pastor Gideon. Go with him this way and he's going to pray with you again and give you something. God bless you. Those of you watching online, you're watching online, you want to give your life to Christ, pray that same prayer and text a number. There's a number that we used to have if you are lonely, if you need help, put that number on the screen and God is going to bless you. You may be seated. It's time for communion.